Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a little night testing on LPVOs. Uh, and the, the LPVO that I'm focusing on is uh, this one right here. It's from Primary Arms. Okay, uh, SLX 1 to 10 by 28, second focal plane. Uh, it has a really cool reticle, although we're not going to talk too much about the reticle tonight. Uh, it's got a mill grid there. Uh, this isn't a full-blown review. This is part of my testing process where I'm trying to figure out how good this scope is. Um, so, so this is the night testing portion. Now, this is a uh, $450 scope. So there's the scope. It's a 1 to 10. So some people refer to these as a, instead of a low LPVO, medium uh, they call it, a, a, instead of calling it a low power variable optic, they'll call it a medium power variable optic since it goes all the way up to 10 power. I just call it an LPVO. Okay, so this is $450, and um, I'm, I've been comparing it um, to this scope over here. This is also for primary arms. This is from the Platinum series. This is a $1,500 scope, okay? Um, I already did a review on this. That's the PLX. Uh, one to eight. Uh, this is a first focal plane scope, right? So, uh, and this is a like I said, fifteen hundred dollars scope. I mean, with the mount, you're gonna pay sixteen hundred dollars. Uh, and the thing is, when you've got a a first focal plane scope, when you're in one power, you see this, and when you're in eight power, you zoom up, you see that. So you see two different images when you're at one power versus when you're at eight power. Because what you're doing is when you zoom in, you kind of Focusing basically you zoom zoom in on the center uh, and you can't see the details until you zoom in and that's What that looks like. Okay, so so that's the first focal point. The second focal point, Okay, uh, the reticle does not change as you zoom in right so as you zoom in whether you're in one power Or you're in a power you're gonna see the same the same reticle the same image here The only thing that's gonna change is the image as you're zooming into the image okay so um so like i said we got a 450 dollars scope versus a 1500 dollars scope and i gotta tell you guys this 450 dollars scope um on some of the things that i'm interested in right uh it's it's kicking ass man so um especially here in the night shooting part of this testing so let me show you guys let me just give you guys a peek through the glass okay so if you're creeping around at night with an lpvo Okay, that's what you're going to see. So the nice thing about this is you've got that big horseshoe in the middle. Now, this is with illumination off. That's just the etched reticle, okay? Now, it, it's not actually white. It's, it's black. The reason why it looks white is because of the light that's behind me. I think it's reflecting on it. So that is off. That's not in night vision or anything like that. That's off, okay? Now, uh, the cool thing about this is, you see when I get into the shadows? Well, with this, if you've got both eyes open, left eye sees the target, right eye sees that horseshoe, your brain combines the two images, and I'm finding that that's working excellent with this scope over here, okay? All right, now let me show you the other one. Again, this is the second focal point, okay? Now, let me show you the first focal point. This is a $1,500 one. Okay. All right. So first of all, let's get, okay. Let me get you focused. There it is. Okay. So horseshoe in the center is really tiny. So with this, you kind of have to rely. First, let's try to get focused. You have to rely on the posts. Let's try to move this a little bit. Come on, focus. Okay. So there you go. So you have to kind of rely on the posts to guide you to the center. And what I'm finding is like when you get on target, the posts are like so far away that it's hard to find them and track them and bring it to the center. So you see the difficulty that I'm having there? With Again, this is just using the etch reticle. So yeah, that target's in the shadow. Remember, things are always going to be hiding in the shadows. Now with this, if I'm like in the shadows, like you can't see that horseshoe. So 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 you can't like if you lose 
if you if you if you if your head comes out of position okay with that first focal plane if your head comes out of position you're not going to be able to see the horseshoe you're not going to you know basically the what i found is that the that the reticle just blinks out even when it's in um when you got the illumination on all right so let me let me put the illumination on now so again this is the first focal plane right so this is right so so oh, there you go so you see when you're in the when you're in the shadows you don't see that All right so you can out of focus but at least we can see it but when you when you go into the shot into the shadows that completely disappears I don't know why I'm having such a hard time laying this thing up tonight. I'm looking at it in the camera. Well, there you go. There you got a glimpse of it in the shadows. Now, let me go back to... Let's go back to the second focus thing, right? Cheaper one. $150. I'm going to light this one up. Okay, so so first of all, immediately, like even though I'm off, you can see how you can you can see that horseshoe, right? Even when we're way off, right? So here's the thing: as long as you can see that horseshoe, it doesn't matter if you're in the shadows. Your other eye is going to see the target, and you're going to be able to get on it. So even though I'm having a real hard time lining this up, there it goes kind of lined up there. Okay. But even if you're off, right, as long as you can see it somewhere in the scope, in the shadows, you'll be able to hit it with both eyes open, right? So you can see this is way easier, second focal plane, um, to get that on target. So let me do this. Let me put these guns back together, and we're going we're gonna to shoot them. We're not going to shoot this the way you think we might shoot this. We're going to shoot this from an awkward position. So I'm facing the camera here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn around and try to aim behind me. Now, this is the $1,500 one. All right, let's get back around to this side. Now, right there is that 10 yards. I couldn't find the horseshoe on that one. All right, I'm going to go back to 30 yards now. All right, so it, the horseshoe is blinking out on me. Again, this is a $1,500 one. Okay. So if you guys do this test here where you're doing it like this, you're like, wait, no, it's blinking out on me. Can't see it. Go. Let's go to the. Uh... Okay, so that was the first focal point, right? Let's go second focal point now. Now, by the way, that's with that was with the illumination on, with the reticle lit. Okay, so let's go around. Let's go start with the close target. Now that's way, way, way easier. Seeing that big horseshoe. Okay. Really tricky. Let's go back to the 30 yards. It's horseshoes not blinking out on me or anything. Like, even if I'm a little bit off, 
I can still see that horseshoe. That bigger horseshoe from the second focal point. Like right now, like if that was a situation where I, I couldn't, all I saw was shadow on the scope, but because when I saw reticle, the other eye saw the target, and my brain combined the two images. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to turn off the illumination. All right, so we're just using the etched reticle. Now, I should have probably started off with this, okay? So first, let's just come up, get on target. Okay, this is the second focal point now. Coming up. Let's go to the 30 yards. Okay. All right. So again, this is the second focal plane, the $450 scope. Just that theoretical. Okay, go around behind me. Just that theoretical. Keep forgetting to take the safety off. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's go to the um, let's go to the first focal point. Okay, this is this one. Okay, first focal plane. Now this is the fifteen hundred dollar one, just with the etched reticle. It's almost a guess where it is. I have to really search for that 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 tiny little uh, horseshoe. Let's go to 30 yards. So, in this exercise, the posts on the side, they're really not helping me that much. Um, uh, because they're just too far away from the target. Because I'm, I'm looking kind of at the target, and I'm... You know, I find myself, you know, as a matter of practicality, just searching for, trying to find that tiny horseshoe rather than going to the posts. Now, sometimes I kind of get desperate and I start looking for the post. You drive me to the center. I mean, without the post leading you to the center, this would be absolutely impossible. Like, you wouldn't be able to. There's no way that you could find that thin horseshoe. Right, let's do this. I've got a target out there at 75 yards. You guys can't see it in the camera. I already, I already looked behind the camera. It's, it's just you guys. There's just not enough light being thrown out there. Um, you can't see the 75 yard target. Let me see if I can hit it with, if I can, if I can get on target with just the extra Now the target is white, so I can kind of see the target at 75 yards. Okay. So it's a question of can I see the radical and get on it. So again, we're going with the. Uh, uh, we're still on the fifteen hundred dollars scope, right? We're on the M eight. Yeah, it's really a guess. I did hit it, but it is really uh, you kind of have to um, you kind of have to follow those posts to the center and try to guess where your center is um, because you cannot see that this horseshoe. In that shadow back there, I can, you know, the target's white, so I can see the shadow, the target. Uh, I cannot see the horseshoe when I get on target. I have to basically try to center between the, the posts. Yeah, it's, too, it's just a guess. I'm trying to guess where the center is using those posts. Um, I mean, without the posts, I wouldn't be seeing anything. Let's go to the... Let's go to the, to the uh, second focal plane. All right, this is the $450 one. Right, uh, yeah, we're just using the horseshoe now. Just the, just the etched radical. No illumination. Oh, am I doing here? Okay, so you can hear the dings. 
Okay, I'm getting a much higher hit rate uh, with the second focal plane, which has the bigger horseshoe, which, which is, it's not just bigger, it's, it's thicker. So I can see the blackness of the horseshoe out there, and I can kind of center the target in that black horseshoe, right? So there's really little light out there. There's, a, there's enough light being thrown out there so I can see the white target, but I can't, not enough light for me to see my X reticle. The second focal plane is absolutely kicking ass in this type of situation, right? Where I've got just the edge reticle, uh, just by the virtue of the fact that it's bigger, thicker. Uh, I mean, it's just absolutely kicking ass. I mean, you can see the, the you can, you can, you, you, you guys heard the hit rate. Let me do this. Let me go back to the first focal plane. Okay. And what I'm going to do is now is I'm going to put on the illumination. Uh, Look a real lower. Let's see with the illumination if I can increase my hit rate. With, uh, this, again, this is the uh, MA. This is the fifteen hundred dollar one. Oh, I'm gonna power this down a little bit more. Oh, this is interesting. At the seventy-five yards, when I put the illumination on, I can see the radical, but now I can no longer see my target because what's happening is even with this, uh, at the, let me see what, what position, I'm in three, let me go all the way down to one on this uh, M8, again, this is a $1,500 one. If I go all the way down to one, and now it didn't light up at all. Just to I can see something. Okay. Yeah, so before it was at three, and and the the the, the radical was basically just outshining the target, so I, I I couldn't see the target, right? So let's see if I'm right now what position I'm in. I'm in the two position, okay? In the two position, I can just barely make out the radical. Okay. I mean, obviously, I've, I'm getting more hits now, uh, but I'm still not doing. Uh, this is the thing is I did better with the second focal plane. I think with just the extra radical, not even lighting it up. Let's uh, light up the uh, second focal plane. One. All right, so we're in the lowest night vision setting. So the lowest night vision setting is pretty bright, um, and. Um, if you're using like night vision, I think it's probably going to overwhelm you, right? If you if you're actually using night vision, so let's take a look at this and see how that's going. Yeah. So so in the one setting, in the one setting, the the reticle is overwhelming my target. Um, now, the nice thing about this though is I can see the chevron. Whereas with the other one, I couldn't even see the chevron. I was just looking at the big horseshoe, trying to center on a horseshoe. With this, I can actually see the chevron. Uh, but the problem that I'm having is, even on the one setting, it's it's overwhelming my target. I can't see my target. You know, it's still too bright for me to get on my target. At 75 yards. Let's do this. Let's turn it off. So I am, I prefer to have just the X reticle, okay? I got, I'm getting way more hit. I'm getting more hit um, in these lighting conditions with just the etched reticle. Uh, because when I put on the illumination, I, I can't see my target, even, even in the low thing. And again, that's the SLX, that's the, uh, the, the $450 one.
to get a couple more rounds here. I want, I want to take a couple more hits with the just the X reticle because this is proving to be a really interesting test. With you know, uh, at night, if you got if you got just a little bit of light, like I got right now, I got a little bit of light where I can just like barely see out there. Uh, using just the X reticles is proving to be more successful. Um, and the, the second focal plane overall is proving to be more successful in, uh, in these lighting conditions. Try this again. Alright, so again, just the etched reticle. I mean, I'm, I'm getting, you know, I'm, I'm just getting way more hits with just the X reticle. Let me, uh, let me go back to the, um, to the 1500 all the way, the M8. Again, these are both primary arms, so it's not like I'm beating up on primary arms or anything. Um, I've got two really good scopes here. They've got really good qualities. Um, you know, in some places, one excelled over the other. I, I'm going to, I'm planning to do a full-blown review on this, uh, on this MS10, right, the, 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 the $450 one. And I'm gonna, you know, for, I, I'm gonna do the same thing in that review. I'm gonna kinda do a comparison. And, and, and the reason why I'm doing a comparison between these two scopes is because I got here a $450 scope that's like, you know, really keeping up pretty good with the with the $1,500 scope. And again, they're both primary arms. Um, now there are a couple of features in that fifteen hundred dollar scope that make it stand out that you don't have in the cheaper one. So when we do the detailed video, you know that's where you kind of have to decide what's what's more important to you. But for this type of condition, right, if you're going to send me out into the night to you know with an LPVO, or if I have to use one optic where let's say in the daytime I might be shooting let's say like four or five hundred yards. You know where you know I, I want to have the bull drop compensator and I want to have the wind holes and I want to have stuff like. But at night, you know, I, I might need to use it at night. At night, I want a scope that's also going to work at night. So I need something to shoot far in the daytime, but also be able to shoot close, you know, close distance at night. Right now, the second focal point is it, it's just kicking ass because, because you can't shoot at distance and. I'm shooting a lot better right now at night. So let me do this uh, right now. I have got the etch. I got the reticle on. I want to get a couple more shots with the reticle on. Okay. Um, in that low, in the lowest possible setting, um, in the lowest possible brightness setting. I was doing pretty good. I was getting successive hits one after the other on that target. I'm going to turn it off now. Yeah, when you turn this thing off, you got nothing, man. It's just a guess. I don't even want, I don't want, I don't want to shoot this. I mean, it's just a guess. Trying to figure out where your horseshoe is, you know, out there in the shadow. So, with this M8 Raptor, right? Uh, pretty much, if your if you if your illumination is off at night, you're you can't use this past. You know, maybe you can go up to 50 yards. See, that was 75 yards. Let me see if I get to 50 yards. Uh, let me turn the light off at 50 yards. Yeah, you know, at 50 yards, I can't even see that target. Let me try the 65 yard target, which I can I can see. Let me see if I can make the shots with the. But now, I, I still, even at 65 yards, I just cannot see the horseshoe. I cannot see the chevron. The posts are not enough to help me center this thing. I mean, it's just, it's just too far out to, to the side. I can kind of see the post coming up from the bottom, right? I can see the post coming up to the bottom, but I don't know where it stops. So I have, no, I just cannot see the horseshoe. I got no, no point to aim at. 
So when I go to one, yeah, I can see it now. That was 65. 75. Okay, so this primary arms M8 Raptor at night, you basically you have to use it with the reticle. If you don't, if you with the reticle illuminated, if your reticle doesn't illuminate, you got nothing. You got nothing to hold on. With the other one, with the uh, the four hundred fifty dollar one, okay, um, this one. You can use it with just the reticle if you got a little bit of light. If you go on even to the lowest night vision setting at 75 yards, it almost my target almost disappears. Take a couple more shots and then we'll, we'll, we'll call it a night. Call it a night. All right, so this is with the uh, this is with the illuminated reticle on on the four hundred fifty dollar one. Low setting. Yeah, I keep the problem is I keep losing the target because the the, 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 the chevron even the low setting is just overwhelming it. And I, I I can't see it. So with this, I'm turning it off. So in the off position. Yeah, the lighting conditions changed a little bit so that I really can't even see the horseshoe now. So for whatever reason, it got a little bit darker over there. Let's go back to the reticle. So now, this time around, I, I couldn't even see the, the horseshoe at all. Let me go back to that to that low setting. Okay, so what I'm doing is, since that chevron's overwhelmed the target a little bit, what I'm doing is I'm coming down off of the target so I can see it, right? So I see the target and then I bring my I bring my chevron up to it after I've identified the spot that it's in. So it's like I saw it, like I'm, I'm down, so I know how much I got to move up. So even though it overwhelms it, I'm able to move the chevron and get it on and, and, and make my hit. So it's like I said, for whatever reason right now, it's just gotten a little darker out there. I don't know, maybe, the, you know, I don't know what happened. But it's gotten a little bit darker. I cannot see the X reticle out there anymore. Yeah, I'm making my hit. So if, if I can't find, if I can't see it, just come off of it. Now I can't. So when I did that time, I put the old X reticle on it. Not the X reticle, the, the lit up, the illuminated reticle. And what I did is I focused on the target with my left eye. Right? Focus on it with my left eye, and then I brought the illuminated chevron up to it. So even though it overwhelmed it, my left eye had a lock on it, and my brain was able to combine the two images. Let's do that again. So I'm focusing with my left eye. See it? Alright, so obviously this is not an easy thing to do. But anyway, that's some information for you guys to digest. Um, it, it, overall, it seems like in these lighting conditions, the second focal point is, is just working a lot better for me. Um, uh, you know, in, in this, under these specific circumstances. Uh, there's other things I really like about that first focal plane. We'll talk about in another video. Uh, but under these conditions, 
second focal plane is working better. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it was useful to you guys. Drop some comments below. Uh, and, and, and look out for that, that video that I'm going to probably do in the next couple of days. Um, it will be a full-blown review on this uh, uh, SL, SLX 1 to 10 by 28 um, first focal plane, uh, second focal plane, second focal plane. It's 34 millimeter tube. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk a lot, a lot more about this. I'll also be comparing these two scopes. And, and the reason why I'm comparing it, uh, because normally we think, yeah, $1,500 scope is going to just blow it out of the water. And it's not happening. I mean, it's the $1,500 scope is, is not blowing... It's not just blowing away the, the $450 scope. In, in some areas, the $450 scope is actually uh, excelling. So uh, we'll talk again soon.